Hello, I'm Ryan Sungalia. Welcome to Rappler Talk. Philippine triathletes dominated their sport in the SEA Games with Claire Adorna and Kim Magrobang drawing first blood at first and second place finishes, respectively. Not long after, Nico Huelgas then landed the top podium in the men's division. Adorna's win is especially significant. She won the Philippines its first gold medal in the SEA Games despite a nagging ankle injury. What will their historic victory spell for the future of Philippine triathlon and its standing in global athletics? Joining us today are triathletes Claire Adorna, Kim McGrobang, and Nico Huelgas. Hello and good afternoon. Afternoon. Hi, afternoon. First off, I want to congratulate you all. Um, it, amazing uh, performances, because going into the uh, triathlon events, um, you guys were really like the favorites, because uh, you've done so well in uh, previous competitions. <laughs> Um, I'll start off with you, um, Claire. Was that, uh, did that give you any added pressure knowing that people were expecting a lot out of you guys? Yeah, cause it, yeah, especially you know that people are like, want you to win, so it adds a little pressure to us. But when you're in a race, you just don't think about those things. You just focus on your race and finish and just do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And Aniko, um, tell me about yourself. Um, what was that like knowing that um, people really were thinking this, you, you guys are expected to top this event? Yeah, it was a lot of pressure on us at the same. Um, in addition to that, the competition for the men's were, was really tight. Any, it's anyone's game, so there's so much pressure going on in our mind. We couldn't sleep a few days before. There was, there was a lot of anxiety going on and really fast heartbeat. Mm -hmm. But during the race, we just enjoyed the moment. How about you, Kim? Um, tell me about that. Yeah, same as the two. The pressure is on on the game because everyone is watching and us and a lot of Filipinos in Singapore that time supporting our fellow athletes also. Well, you know, you guys seem like pretty friendly. Like, tell me, like, did you guys um, like help each other get through this? Like say, hey, you know, it, it, you know we're going to do our best anyways. Um, did you give any advice or, or comfort to your friends here? Yeah, actually we train together, so we comfort each other every time we train so hard for this coming, this for this race. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, Nico, how, how was that? Like, um, were they like, uh, like, did they intimate to you at all that, like, hey, this is a big event here, you know? Um, did Did you give them any uh, words of comfort? Yeah, I mean, I told them just enjoy the moment. We are mm -hmm. here already, and we are we are already living the dream as national athletes, and we already give pride and honor. So today, we just have to give it all we've got. How about you, Claire? Um, did you tell them anything before the race to kind of calm their jitters a bit? Yeah, uh, and for me and Kim, we always, I always say that, yeah, we can do this, we could get the one and two, we just have to believe in ourselves, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm curious, how does one go about starting um, to become a triathlete? Because um, it's one thing to, to do distance running, swimming, uh, bicycling. Is it just an issue of, hey, I want to do all these things. I don't have the time. Where can I find a sport that does all the things that I want to do at once? Like, how does that start? Like, well, for, first, I think you need you know how to <coughs> swim. And, yeah, because that's the most important. After finishing your swim, and if you know how to bike and you have a bike, well. Uh, you know, you could easily get into triathlon because at the end you just have to run and finish the 10k run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you? How did you get started in, in triathlon? Triathlon. I started as a swimmer back in college, and from there I joined a fun run. And that, and at 2009, it was the booming of fun runs. You know, everybody would go to this fun run and just finish a 5k, and they would feel great about it. In my case, I surprisingly won that fun run, and I was discovered by a national coach who was the host of the event. And from there, he invited me to join a triathlon, which I didn't know what was a triathlon itself. But before that, I joined an aquathlon, so it's a swim run. So that's usually how triathletes start. They start off with one sport, then two, then three. Mm -hmm. And how about you? How did you get started? Um, at first, I was a swimmer, but not so good. Then my coach asked me to, to try out for national team triathlon. And after that, all went through. Mm -hmm. And then that's what I started. Mm -hmm. Like. It's, uh, I imagine it's one thing to uh, be competing uh, locally, 
uh, it's quite another thing when you're carrying the Philippine flag. You know, you're racing for your country. Um, is that uh, a different experience knowing that so many of your countrymen and women are are rooting for you? Uh, yeah, it's really uh, crazy and you know overwhelming experience for us. Especially you're, you're bringing your country, you're representing your country. Uh, at at the end of the race, when you're standing and you're hearing your national anthem, it just feels so great. Yeah, and we are representing not only ourselves but the whole country as a yeah. whole, all of the people all over the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, same with them. Like being there is just a big dream. Winning a medal is like a blessing, real blessing. Um, you mentioned that um, that there were people, there were Filipinos in Singapore who were rooting you on. Um, I mean, did, did, obviously you're you're tuned into the race, but did you look over to the side like, hey, I can, I I got a cheering section here. <laughs> I'm I'm abroad, and there are people who want me to win. No, actually, I don't, I don't, I don't see them. I just do my race. Mm -hmm. I just want to finish the race. <laughs> yeah. Actually, how about you? Did you see anyone like uh, anything like uh, just in terms of shows of support uh, from the people? Locally? Yeah, I, I sort of noticed it during the run. I saw one of so some of my friends who went to we went from Manila yeah. and they have a Philippine flag. They have they made a poster out of me. They cropped it, so I was like, really? oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't look like that." <laughs> 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 but yeah, it, it it encouraged me and motivated me to finish the race strong. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Did you did you see anyone there? Um, anything that sticks out in your mind as far as uh, local support? Yeah, w my coach, my coach, really shouting hard. And then I can hear them while I was running, and then, oh God, oh God, where's the finish line, eh? <laughs> where's the finish line? Please, Lord, help me, because people were like chilling, oh, you can do it, you can do it, oh, you're almost there. And I was like, please, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you ever get to a bigger event, maybe uh, it won't just be a, during the run. You might see people out in boats, like, while you're doing the swim, like, come on, I keep swimming faster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell me about, um, you know, what is, um, uh, what are the challenges to being, uh, an athlete in, in, in such a, a tough endurance sport um, because um, a lot of people um, say it's hard to uh, find the facilities here because um, in terms of swimming we didn't uh, get any gold medals um, you know yeah. there were a lot of uh, uh, medals that were up for that um, is it hard to find the, um, the facilities to train here uh, adequately uh, I think here you can do you can do the same thing but the problem is if sometimes your lack of time mm -hmm. or sometimes the traffic and the people it, it's quite you know busy here yeah. then training abroad they're more they have like a, uh, a place there where they're focused there in sport so they have the enough fa facilities and equipments uh, they're more upgraded in terms of their nutrition their discipline and nutrition which also helps mm -hmm. us athletes how about you, Nico? Yeah, as a whole, based on what I've experienced in Rio, Mayor, Portugal, it's actually the environment that influences you to change your ha typical habits. Yeah. So one would be the diet, because eating healthy there is a norm. Yeah. Uh, the yogurt there is much, much cheaper compared, mm -hmm. compared to in Manila. That's one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Another one would be the mindset of the people. You know, yes. you're, you'll be training with world-class athletes because Europe has one of the highest, highest standards of triathlon and you get really pushed and challenged every single day because everybody they really wants it bad. He wants to win an Olympic gold medal, mm -hmm. not just any medal, an Olympic gold medal. And you, it's inev it becomes inevitable, inevitable for you to really push hard every single time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing. You can push harder when you're training abroad and like here in the Philippines because here in the Philippines it's like crowded. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... I guess it's much better to train abroad for our sport. Yeah. For our sport, it depends on the sport. Although there are a lot of people who tell me when uh, they, ever, they go to train uh, to other countries, um, it's harder to find rice, you know? So it's like, sometimes you get that craving like, ah, oh, you know, today I just want to have rice. And mm -hmm. it's a little bit hard when you're in Portugal, I imagine. Um, so tell me about um, um, just the mind, because you guys mentioned the mental uh, game of it. Uh, and sports, it, it's all about the mental part of it. Um, Tell me about um, how you uh, tune your mind uh, to really get the most out of your uh, your bodies uh, athletically. 
Well, I think for me, you just really have to endure the pain and tell your tell your mind that you can do it, that you've worked hard for it and prepared hard for it. So just go and do what you have to do and give your best and finish the race with no regrets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you? Like, is there anything you do specifically? Um, well, in terms of training your mind to make it mentally tougher compared to the usual, you have to consistently train for it every single day. You have to learn how to struggle consistently and be able to experience workouts that will really challenge the mind, not only the body, because during a race, by the time you're about to finish the race or even half of it, you will be experiencing mental toughness already. How about you? Yeah, for me, because you work hard in the training, so it's just time to harvest on the race day. So just relax, just do what you want to do on the race day. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you went into uh, into the Sea Games with a nagging injury already, at the ankle problem. Um, tell me about that. Um, was that in your mind? Like, you know, I have a big race ahead of me. Um, did you have any lingering doubts whether you could hold up for the whole triathlon? Before the race, I was having some doubts that, oh no, I can't do it, I have this ankle injury. But then there are people who guide, who guide me, like my coach, my parents, that, you know, uh, clear whatever happens. Win or lose, you're still a winner for us. You can do it. Just endure the pain, you're already there. So yeah, just go there and show them what you've got. So I told myself, oh yeah, Claire, let's do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like, um, is it one of those things where you had to just kind of tune it out and once you hit the, the finish line, you'd be like, oh, now it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I was experiencing it already when I was running, but yeah. then I was like, I wanted to stop. But then as I said, when my coach was really shouting hard and I was like, you have to finish it, you have to finish it. Okay, Lord, just please help me now and let me finish this race. And after this, oh, party time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. You can put all the ice on it you want. You know? Yeah, and then I told my foot, oh, come on, just hold it in. <laughs> this come is on, just a 10K run, me. yeah. <laughs> um, how, how, how was it, um, was it, did you find any uh, kind of um, support uh, from your teammate here, um, uh, you knowing that, you know, wh whether you slowed down or not, the Philippines was going to get uh, a oh, gold medal? Wonder. Yeah. Uh, we had, like, before the race, we already said that whoever wins, it should be one and two for us, yeah. like me and Kim. We can't let another country be, like, the first or the second. We have to get it no matter what happens. So we have to, you work know, together. work together. Yeah. So, and we did. <laughs> so like, it, so basically, you guys went in there like, hey, this is a this is a race between you and me, really. You know, mm -hmm. they're they're spectators, basically. Um, <laughs> you guys had kind of figured, you know, it was gonna be one and two, right? Yeah, because yeah. I think we both believe that we could be one and two. Nico, have you ever had any injuries that um, nagged you during a, a race? So so far this year, no. It was pure mental, you know. But I had struggles when I arrived in Manila, coming from Portugal, one week before. I was experiencing anxiety and jet lag mm -hmm. because our, at that time, Portugal's night, night sleep time is 6 a.m. here in the Philippines. So it was a big struggle for me. Mm -hmm. But all throughout, yeah, it was good. Like, um, but you've never in the past, like you've never had, um, you know, I mean, that's great for you, you know, you cross your fingers that it keeps up that way. Um, <laughs> but like, um, so you, you've been uh, uh, blessed to never have had any serious physical ailments while you were Yeah, no major injuries or whatsoever, no, I didn't went any surgeries, which is, uh, I'm very thankful for. That's great. And, but by the way, how is the ankle? And you can, if you want to just grab it right now and say, ah, it hurts, okay. don't worry, it's not a race thing. <laughs> yeah. For now, because I'm not doing anything, yeah. so I, you know, it's, he's, re my foot's resting right now, but I wanted to take care of it right now, so I want to go for a surgery this year so i'm planning to have my surgery this year so i could be back next year because mm -hmm. next year there's a there's a big um, uh, athletic event taking place uh i believe it's in brazil um olympics olympics yeah, oh, really? yeah, That's what they call yeah. It. Yes. yeah. um so i imagine that um you should be okay to go by then right yeah but, but not in tw the 2016 olympics uh first is because we don't have enough points to wow. represent there and um our coaches said that we are too young and that we need more exposures and that we could we should race more world cups asian cups continental cups mm -hmm. so maybe in the 2020 olympics hopefully 
So tell us. fingers. So walk us down there, because you know, you're making a lot of fans today. You made a lot of fans in Singapore. Um, what is next for uh, each of you? Well, our biggest goal, I think, the two of us, was really to represent the country in the 2020 Olympics. Mm -hmm. And hopefully to, mo to win, and we need to win in World Cups, Asian Cups, and Continental Cups yep. in order to get there. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what, what about, um, what's the next race? Because I know you just had a race uh, right after. Yeah, yeah the, after the SEA Games. It's yes. the Asian Triathlon Championships. Mm -hmm. We did pretty well, by the way. Held mm -hmm. in we placed Taipei. third in the men's team competition, mm -hmm. which is the first time. And the women's category, they placed second. Because mm -hmm. I, I remember you were just telling me off camera that you had like a, you know, you, you were just trying to get through this race because you know you know you know you had another race going on uh, uh, a week later. Um, what what is that mi mindset like? Oh, I got to get through this really tough race so I could do it again next week. Yeah, you know? it was okay. I mean, after finishing Sea Games, the pressure went down. Yeah, pretty down. So it was a little bit laid back the coming days, but it was still tiring. But still, my mind was still focused. I couldn't be complacent. I still watched my diet. Mm -hmm. Still get got plenty of sleep and rest. Mm -hmm. and, and how about you? Um, what was that like um, when you just, uh, you know, you just complete this, this tough race and knowing that, you know, there, this is just the beginning really because, you know, there are so many other things that you're going to be doing and this is obviously it's a huge uh, milestone. What, what did this do for you mentally knowing that you were able to uh, finish at such a high place in uh, the subcontinental meet? Um, for me, SEA Games is just like another same like other races mm -hmm. so we need to train again for our next races so we can we can sea games just can't stop us for training mm -hmm. for another competition mm -hmm. so yeah. you mentioned it was party time after you know you finished the race <laughs> for yeah. her because she has an injury oh yeah <laughs> for have, us yeah. no because we don't have so we we'll still have to train though <laughs> i mean like it's party time like you can spend your time with your family because yeah. you've been away from them well, for a long it's your time. Party time you can <laughs> eat like fast foods but you still have to train right yeah oh well so still get ha i still have to get back to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All year round like training. It's like our job, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there's no off season, there's no... Yeah, yeah only in mid-December. Yeah. So like, oh, like, oh it's, uh, it's, it's June, I can't wait till mid-December so I can take a break finally. Yeah. No, yeah. mid-December. Mid mid-December. Um, so uh, how did you guys celebrate? Spend time with my family. Mm -hmm. Really, like, I really miss them. Eat fast foods. Oh yeah, like yeah. the chicken joints. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which they don't have. I, I don't believe in uh, in Portugal, right? Or well, Australia. in Australia, well they have, but you know, I'm right. trying to stay oh. away from it. <laughs> how about you? How did you? Same celebrate? thing, family and catching up with some friends, especially the ones in the north and the the southern part, because usually we're too focused on training or always out of country, so. We miss a lot of these kind of catching up sessions. Mm -hmm. Well, and you, and you had great Quento when you uh, come back from Singapore. So, what did you do last week? Oh, I want to go medal, you know. <laughs> I, made <them> most, <laughs> I made the most out of my life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and how about you? How did you start it? Same thing, family and catching up with the friends. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about your uh, teammate uh, who's not here. Um, John um, Erdzai. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what was um, that like, uh, like uh, you know, ca competing together uh, and racing together? Um, would you say that he was a help for you, um, getting ready for this? Definitely. I mean, prior to race, we already spoke that, you know, we were going to help out. And it made me feel more confident. Mm -hmm. And especially what happened during the race, wherein it was very unexpected. It rained two hours before the race. Yeah. And we were all, like, preparing for a hot race. We trained for saunas every single day. Then things, things changed, you know, and it happens. Life happens like that, right? So what happened was that... The, the swim part was very tough. It was really wavy. The mm -hmm. current was really strong. So we all had a bad swim. We were struggling. And then during the bike, which was slippery, I slipped onto my bike. So yeah, I kind of got bruises and some blood. But everything changed when I saw Jonard just near me during the bike. So he waited for me after I crashed. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I was able, we were able to win that goal. And you know, I wouldn't be able to win that medal without him. Mm -hmm. um, so wh what is that like when um, you know, you're already so far into a race and then something like that happens? How do you mentally get yourself back together? It was, it was all practice because I had to train my mind for it. You have to be prepared for any of these circumstances. 
and I, and thankfully I was really that Joner was there to help me out because without him maybe my mental I would mentally break down because I was lose I would lose hope in winning that medal. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing with triathlon, draft legal races like that. It's all teamwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I, I want to also because obviously this this should really open people's eyes that um, we have three Philippine athletes who. Uh, not just you know got medals, but you know high finishes. Uh, we're talking uh, golds and silvers. Um, what uh, can you say to the uh, the young Filipinos and Filipinas who are watching right now uh, about if they want to get involved in this kind of a, uh, an event? Uh, keep dreaming and keep believing in themselves because you never know what God's plan is for you. Like. You never know one day, oh, you're going to be a triathlete and then you're going to win that gold medal. So, you know, keep dreaming. It's free. So everyone can dream. So never stop dreaming. Yeah. Based on my observation and experience, I believe that Filipinos have the talent for the sport. Yeah. Gen not only triathlon, but generally endurance sports. And with this, I recommend that they start off with one sport, either swimming, biking, or running. But tr obviously, we would, rec we would recommend to start with the swim first because it's the toughest and the longest investment it takes you months before you can actually get the technique going. From there, if you enjoyed endurance sports and you found talent in it, join another, add another sport, then add another. Then you are now a triathlete, right? There you go. <laughs> For me, um, for all the kids there that wants to try triathlon, just try it because in triathlon you don't need height; you just need endurance. And everyone, I think, they can bike and run. So they just only have to do swimming. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't need height. Where do I sign up? Yeah, and that's a <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good thing in our sports. We don't need height. Yeah, and that's a, actually the biggest requirement of triathlon. It's not really height. It's more mental toughness and character. And Filipinos have really got character. Great, great. Well, we've been talking to Sea Games medalist Claire Dorna, Kim Margrobang, and Nico Huagas about their winning moments in the Sea Games. I'm Ryan Sangalia. Thank you for watching. Hee <laughs> hee.